And the question is, uh, how did you come to meet Sanita? And a second question is, how difficult it was as a woman to make a film in Iran and going to Okay. Um, I will, I will first answer to your second question. Um, being a filmmaker in Iran is, is difficult as a, just being a filmmaker because of censorship, but being a female filmmaker in Iran is not more difficult than being a male filmmaker. 25% of Iranian filmmakers are women, so it's not something very unusual that you are a female filmmaker in Iran. And there is a huge difference between Iran and Afghanistan. So you cannot even put them in a in a sentence. You know how it is difficult for being a being a female in Iran and Afghanistan. Iran and Afghanistan are quite different kind, very different countries for women. Uh, Iran is um, has a lot of problems, but 65 percent of university students are female in Iran. So. It's just different. In Afghanistan, still it's a big question for people if they should let their daughters go to school or not at all. So, um, that's the second question. First question, I met Sonita through my cousin. Uh, my cousin is a social worker. Uh, she has studied sociology, so she was working in that NGO, but she's not in the movie because she was not working in that building. She was working in the headquarters. But she asked me to go and visit Sonita because she wanted to, she told me that we have a talented girl here. She wants to, she loves music and come and see if you can help her with finding some tra music training or somebody who wants to record her or help her. So I met Sonita and I didn't decide to make this movie just when I met her, but after a while, um, because I found a friend who got volunteered to teach her uh, some guitar and some music. And when I saw how passionate she is and how much problems she has, I was thinking about making a dark movie about uh, Afghan teenagers in Iran who have no future. So it was my first idea. And actually to, to follow up on her second question, um, I know a lot of people in the United States know that it's illegal for women to sing solo in Iran, uh, but what would be the punishment? I mean, is, can Sonita go back to Iran? Can she sing there, or is there any repercussions? I mean, Sonita, I, I don't know. I mean, I know that some, some, some women who have been who have recorded music and yeah and have um, broadcasted it from TVs outside of Iran, they have been in trouble. But I don't know. Uh, Sonita has no plan to come back to Iran. Yeah, she will be questioned, of course. I think, but it's not like I have never heard anybody get killed or even imprisoned. But the main thing is the problem is for studios. If they find who was recording them. Usually they punish the studios who are licensed but doing illegal things. Also, there are some, now there are some people in jail because they had uh, music websites and they were, they were in Iran and they had some websites for underground music. And because of that, they are, arrested and now they are in jail and they are like they have to be in jail like six years or something for um, just for supporting underground music so there's another question out there you guys don't have to be afraid come on down Oh. Well, um, I'll, I'll, oh, ask you, yeah. <laughs> I'll ask you one more uh, before we head out tonight, um, which is, um, what what's next for Sunita? You know, she's, you said she doesn't plan to go back to Iran. She's going to stay in the United uh, States. She, she wants to go to law school and become a, a human rights lawyer, and now she's an activist for ending child marriage. So these are her plans, and yeah, she will. Stay. 
she wants to be back to Afghanistan only when she can bring a change, not just going them, going there and living with her family. So now that's why she's she's studying so hard to go to law school. Again, I mean, with this movie, uh, some universities offered her scholarship, which is great. Mm -hmm. So I mean, it's not difficult for her to get to university, to college. Mm -hmm. And have you started another film, or would you like to make more films? You know, I just said I'm retired. <laughs> <laughs> oh wait, we have some. Questions. Oh, there's a question. Yeah. Uh, hi. So hi. I wanted to know uh, how you got people to agree to like be on film, like the passport official and all the other people at Sunita met. Like, how did you get them to agree to? Be on film. I say, um, because of my charm, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. They love to be in my film. Hi, that was. I really enjoyed the film. Thank you for sharing that with us. Um, as a lover of language, I was really curious about the dialects because I felt like you and Sunita spoke in one and then the news channels in Afghanistan were in a different, uh, so I was wondering if you could just tell us, or tell me, <laughs> if you were speaking Persian and, switched to, and then I switched yeah, yeah. to Pashto. No, no, uh, Sunita is from a region and it was from Herat, right. a city that they, they speak Persian. I mean, okay. Af Afghanistan, in Afghanistan, yeah, we, um, so we, we speak the same language, she has some accent. Right. But, I mean, Harad people have some accent, but she, Sanita speaks a decent Iranian Persian accent because she's been somehow raised in Iran. But yeah, it's, we understand each other. We, Persian speakers in Afghanistan and Iranian people, we understand each other. And then the news channels in Afghanistan, was that still Persian or was that? A different the news in the movie it was in, in Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. um, they have both. They have okay. Persian and they have Pashto. Pashto. Okay. Yeah, but it seems that still the dominant language is Persian, but it's always a fight between Pashto language and yeah, it's like a country of conflict. So everything is just like every, everybody is just you know the yeah after civil war and all the problems still is like always a, but yeah. And the passport official was speaking, he spoke very little, but I was, was that more? Um, Everybody was speaking, speaking Persian. Persian. Okay. So but Persian accent. is more like, more like an official, official language yeah. if you, especially in Kabul, I mean, it's more like you don't expect people to speak Pashtun to you if you go to an office. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hi. First of all, I thank you very much that uh, you did a really brave uh, work on this movie. And the second is, I just have a question that uh, how you are able to get permission from her mother to get a visa? Because in Afghanistan, I don't think there is any for a teenager or girls to get a visa easily without her parents' consent. Uh, we got papers for her. 18 years old papers for her. That was the key. You know, when I went to get papers for her, I tried to get 18 years old, not 17, a lot less. So because of that, we didn't let the permission. We didn't need the permission. I knew that if I get, if I have to do that. So we didn't need her mom's permission when we got 18 years old. Visa, uh, passport. Did you guys uh, give any bribery to get um, Yeah, it, it is. No, we were lucky. We had somebody of really high level in the government. We knew him from connections from Afghanistan Embassy in Tehran, and he kindly helped us. And he's a, just a great guy because we had to pay a lot of bribe if we wanted to do it like that. But he who was, a, I, I can't mention his name, or never mention his name, but he really helped us without any, just out of kindness, out of understanding the situation. He gave us, at the end, we had a lot of problems. It's not like what you see in the movie that's just, we had a lot of problems for getting her papers, and it didn't happen the way we needed 
and at the end he solved the problem. But because of, um, I couldn't reveal all the process, I just kept silent in the movie. Great. I'm from that region, that's why I'm asking this question, but I'm, thank you very much. Thank that you, you don't only save one life, you help. You save whole culture and you really did a brave, brave thing. Thank you. Thank you so much. Hello, I have two questions. One, how long did everything in the movie take? Like how long did it take everything to come together? And two, what was your greatest joy in doing this movie? Uh, um, it took three years, and I can't say it was all like it was. Uh, I love every moment of making this movie. Of course, there were just some very good moments when we got into America. I mean, we, we, we or got some some moments that were more happy. But I enjoyed every moment of making this movie. Or, Make every moment of making movies, or in, that's why I'm doing it because it's the this is not a well paid job at all. So, you do it if you like it, really. You need to have passion for it. And it was, um, it was a really good journey for me. I learned a lot, I changed a lot, I got changed. I so need to also change my life in the way that I look at life now. It just really is a trend. I also got changed. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. Was Sunita's family able to see the movie, and do they have any sort of relationship now? You know, it's got to be a long distance relationship. Um, they have a relation, good relationship with Sonita. Uh, Sonita supports them a lot, but I don't know. I mean, I don't think she showed them. The, she could show them the movie. I don't think she did. Um, I didn't try to do that, but she can show the movie to them, but I don't think she did. She really wanted her mom to come to Sundance, I mean, or to some festival, but it, it never happened. I think it's a, it would be a great idea if the mom was in the festival. <laughs> but it never happened because we didn't know how to bring her mom, I mean, just how to put her in an airplane in Kabul and make sure she will get out in some in America, you know, just like it was too complicated to arrange it. I think we have one last question right here. Um, I was just wondering, do you know where she got her perspective from? Like, uh, her, is how she fe felt typical that you saw a lot of young girls not feeling that the tradition should continue or do you feel, did you talk to her about where she got this idea that she didn't want to participate in this tradition of, of um, marriage? I have my own theories. I have my own theories that she was raised somehow without her mom because the mom somehow left her in, at some point and came back to Afghanistan. So she was raised somehow on her own with her sister but without a mother, without a, the parents. So she, it makes you, and she was working, so it makes you more powerful and more in, on your own, you, you know, and also living in Iran, anyway, in Iran, women like, women's life is not perfect, but they are not getting sold or something like that. Or in, in that organization, she could see that all the teachers are, I mean, are married or not married, but they have their own education and they have their own salaries and they have their own lives. And um, they could see that the Iranian women's life is different, and she didn't. She wasn't living with her, her own family to be that much influenced, and she was working and getting, making money herself, even a really little money. But it gave her a feeling of thinking herself. I think that's why she was she was like that. You guys have so many questions. And there's a couple. Of I should thank you first. Um, but as an uh, audience in America, um, did you think that the movie was um, showing um, dark captures of um, Tehran and Iran and uh, extremely dark of Kabul? Um, 
and then we moved to the um, United States, which was all um, bright and uh, land of opportunities. And I, I'm somewhat was, ashamed the way the movie is finished because uh, although I understand what you want to say, I don't think that this movie shows the dark side of Tehran because it sh shows, really, I mean, I don't think that it shows the dark side of Tehran, uh, shows how Iranians are helping people. There are much more worse things I could show and I didn't, but I'm ashamed that I didn't show how America, American foreign policy is guilty in Middle East and caused a lot of problems. And I just showed that Americans saved an Afghan and unfortunately in America, I mean, sometimes they really tell, you know, they, they use this movie as an example of how they are saving people, saving Afghans. And I mean, many of these problems, creation of Taliban and a lot of things are just like a American money and support. So I'm ashamed, but I couldn't do anything else because Anyway, there is something good about America that American people are have kind of this pro, uh, freedom that, or I don't know, ability that when they see somebody in trouble, they, for example, in a school or an organization, say, we will save this girl, you know? This is something that Europeans wouldn't do easily. So I was just didn't know what to do because this is a good American quality of people of America, and I wanted to appreciate it. I didn't want to because many, you know, I don't say which channel, but an European channel asked me just finish it in the airplane. Don't go to America. We don't want to show America, you know. But I should I should somehow say thank you to those people who did it. But it is that my also. Uh, Pain. I understand what. Did I tell what you mean, or you want to? I am not. You want to say something else? No, I appreciate the fact that you um, elaborated on uh, you being unfortunate on um, you know, showing the actual American side of the country. Yeah. Um, and that how it has probably influenced what's happening in Afghanistan right now. So I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. I will make another movie. Just show. <laughs> Just about that. All right. Well, thank you so much for bringing your film to us. Thank you. Thank you. I've never had such a screening like people sitting. A lot of dogs are watching the movie. I've never <laughs> thank you. All right, and we hope to see you at some more of our IFA weekend uh, in, tomorrow night at uh, Trilot in uh, Clinton Hill, and then at uh, Don Juan on Friday in Industry City and at more of our rooftop shows this summer. Thanks, everyone.